If you've been strength training for a while and you have a body part that seems to be lagging, it's not developing as quickly as the other body parts, don't go heavier, go lighter. It's probably an issue with connecting to that particular muscle. In other words, if you're bench pressing a lot and your shoulders and triceps are building pretty quickly but your chest is lagging, don't just add weight to the bar, actually go lighter, slow down, and try to feel your chest connect when you bench press so that you could get better results. This is true for any body part that's lagging if you've been training for a little while. Well, this, is a good, this is a good tip. Yeah. This is a good tip <laughs> that I, I don't know if when the last time we talked about something like this that I think is overlooked. And when I think back to training clients, maybe one of the like like top tips as far as like things I'd help a client out that is struggling to feel it in a particular muscle, um, the answer was not to push it harder or add more load. Um, it was to slow it down. In fact, I would add to that tip, Sal. I love a isometric hold yes. at the uh, both end uh, end range of the yeah, exercise. stretch and squeeze. Yeah, the stretch and the squeeze, right? So in the chest, it would be in the deep stretch position, isometric hold for you know two to three seconds, and then when you contract and close and squeeze the chest or uh, finish the movement, then another isometric hold for two or three. <sighs> I think that with a lighter weight is a, a much better strategy. Enhance the recruitment process. I mean, it's pretty logical when you think about that, but like it's it's tempting to just try and add more weight and you think that as a result of adding load, it's going to help to build everything, which, you know, uh, if you have a lagging body part, um, to, to be able to, to take your time and, and focus on that a bit to get it to respond uh, more aggressively, you're going to have a lot better result. I think the reason why, Justin, that's not common sense is because I think most people lack the understanding of the, the role of the central nervous system and how much of this is a neurological thing. And it's sure. not just a movement thing. Most people think like you do this exercise, it builds these muscles. Right. And if I, and and you could be doing it and I'm doing the movement it's just correctly. Math, like, like, yeah, load plus reps. Like that's going to, uh, but it, it really highlights uh, how much a role the CNS plays in these exercises and these movements. I mean, how many times have you guys actually seen a client perform a movement and to the naked eye, it looks fine. Mm -hmm. That's wow. a chest press. You look like you're doing the exercise really good, actually. It doesn't look bad at all, but yet they go, I don't feel it in my chest. I feel it all in my arms and my shoulders. And that's a neurological issue. You're not connecting to that yeah. muscle. And it's not neurological in the sense that you're, you have a, like a, yeah, know, a neurological disconnection. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a movement pattern. So you have yeah. muscles that work together and they work together in a particular way. And for whatever reason, they organize themselves in a particular way. And then you strengthen Usually that. for efficiency. Yeah. And then you strengthen that the, the way that they work together. So you say you got shoulders, triceps, and chest for a chest press. Uh, let's say the way you start to press is that your shoulders do a lot of the work. Well, and then you start to develop more strength and you add more weight to the bar. Well, it's going to continue on that path. That's the way you learn it. That's the way you practice it. That's the way that you're strongest. Because if you try to change it suddenly to include more of that lagging body part, you're actually going to be weaker. The reason why a lot of people don't understand this is initially when you're a beginner, the goal is just to get stronger. And that's true, right? If When yeah. you first get started, your best bet is just get stronger in these core lifts. But as you progress, and let's say you do lots of squats, and you're like, okay, I've been squatting now for six months. My squat has gone up a lot. My quads are developing. I'm getting no butt development whatsoever. Okay, now what we need to do is drop the weight and find how to connect to your butt when doing the squat because it looks like your quads are doing more work than they should or more work than you'd like, right? So you have to back off to, to teach yourself or teach your body to do it differently. The example I've used in the past is, uh, is like typing on a typewriter. If you can type with just your index finger, it's really like this is all you've ever done, like me, this mm -hmm. is how I type. If you tell me to use all my fingers and type properly, I'm going to type slower initially because I haven't practiced the proper way to do it at first. However, over time, I will surpass my ability with my index fingers because this is a more beneficial way to do it. But initially, I'm going to be slower. I'm going to be slower at first. So you have to lighten the load, connect to the muscle that you're trying to hit, feel it, slow down, and not push yourself hard because if you push yourself too hard with heavy weight, well, your body, your body just just knows you're trying to lift the weight. And what it'll do is it'll go back to its strongest recruitment pattern, which is one you've been training this whole time, which is the one that is not working or developing the muscles that you're trying to develop. Yeah. I mean, I, I get this visual and I know this is like totally different than your visual you're putting out there, but 
um, in terms of building, like building a structure, like for me, like I was like thinking about my deck and like, I'm like, I'm going to put this like hot tub on my deck and, but that's like thousands of extra pounds. And, and I only have so much based off of the load supporting beams that I have underneath it. Uh, and that's like what I have in, in order to just hold and sustain that weight. And I can keep adding and, and loading that weight on top. But if I'm not reinforcing that and I'm not reinforcing the way that it's stabilizing all that weight on top, like this is not going to hold, uh, you know, long term. And, and plus then if I can reinforce and really, you know, work on that part of it, uh, the, the capability for me increases in terms yeah. of like how much more I can add. He's been sending yeah. a lot of deck pics to me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, have you seen his deck? I've been really deck minded. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as of late. So, so I visual when I think of this, I visualize sport to me. Like I think of golf, I think of baseball and uh, you know, Barry Bonds and I could both get in, into the, the, the batter's box and say we get a, just a bit a, like a easy pitch right down the middle and I could crack that ball, right. And, and hit the ball. And so to the naked eye, I hit the ball. I did what I was supposed to do. He gets in there and, does, and hits the ball and it goes fucking yeah. four times as far. Why? If I can bench press more than him, I can squat more than him. I can deadlift. I'm stronger than him. So why? But yet he's we, got a recruitment pattern. That's, that's right. He is. He's, he's the ability for him to organize his muscles in the right way to set him up for the most beautiful swing to get the most out of that swing. Obviously, this is why you'll hear coaches say it's easier sometimes to teach somebody how to do a brand new skill than it is to teach it, someone who's learned that skill. Absolutely, because yeah. you have to teach them to unlearn it. Yeah. It's yeah. so this is and this is no different than in the weight room. Yeah. If you get somebody who's been lifting weights for many years improperly, right? Not properly setting the bench press up, not properly setting the deadlift up, and then I get a hold of them as a client. Not only do you I have to teach them, off. yeah. Not only do I have to teach them proper mechanics, but I have to get them to unlearn their default pattern, yeah. their default how to lift those, and because they have taught themselves how to organize their muscles in a way, sure to get the bar off the ground. But what they don't realize is that it's so inefficient that it's the limiting factor to them building more muscle and getting stronger. So when I think of it, when we talk about stuff like this, to me, like, like obviously if you played sport, like it just translates so well, it's like, you can, you can hit a golf ball, you can hit a baseball and then you can do it right and really get a lot out of it. And <laughs> weightlifting is the same thing. Yeah. I remember I had a, a buddy of mine who uh, was a, he competed in arm wrestling. This is in Italy. So it's one of my, my family members and he did pull-ups as part of his workout. And he wasn't a big guy, but he was pretty competitive as a weight class. And I watched him do pull-ups and he did bicep pull-ups. He, the way he did pull-ups was biceps mm. because, and it's because that's where he's strong. And I could see when he pull himself up, he kind of round forward and do this kind of like pull up like this. And I remember thinking like, oh, oh, that, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, no, 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 actually you're doing it because that's how you're strong. Yeah. If I have you do it the way that you're supposed to, to hit the back, you're probably gonna be, not going to be able to do as many. We'd have to back way off, do less reps to teach your body to work differently. So when you're doing these compound lifts and you're finding like, you know, I thought, you know, squats were supposed to build my butt or I thought, you know, rows were supposed to build my back or deadlifts were supposed to build, you know, build this or whatever. And it's not working for me. Well, it's, you got to go lighter, fight, hit that muscle so you can feel it, slow down so you can feel it and target it when doing that exercise and then slowly progress from there, which means your form and technique are going to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you just add weight, you're only going to strengthen what you already have. It's right. only going to continue down that same path and you'll continue with that lagging, you know, that lagging body part. Yeah. So, so hard to do with somebody do who's so hard to do with somebody who's been trained for a while because of the, the, the ego, right? Of totally. Like, I've got to completely, all my presses are like that, bro. I go in the gym, yeah, I go in the, it goes down for a, for a while now I go in and I press real light because you know, for me, I have my shoulders and triceps dominate. And for years I didn't want to go lighter. It's like, whatever, I'll just keep, you know, keep lifting heavier or whatever. Now I go way lighter because mm -hmm. I keep working a new recruitment pattern to try. I mean, to you, I feel like you can, I can see a body type. I can tell right away, like a yeah. guy who's been lifting forever and he's got this kind of rolled forward shoulder pot, you know, kind of gorilla yeah. walk and he's got big ass triceps yeah. on him and big delts on him. And then like a flat chest. It's like just dude's been bench pressing yeah. with his, his arms and his shoulders for a decade. You know Wait, do I have a gorilla? I don't have a gorilla walk. <laughs> 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 I wasn't describing you. I know. I wasn't describing you. <laughs> Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps 15. In order to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's program sales, Maps Anywhere is half off and Maps Hit also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show.
<laughs> hey, I want to ask you guys if you guys home. if you guys noticed something. So I noticed something with the new. So we have a, a different schedule here with uh, how we operate at Mind Pump. So we have we're more time in the studio for less days, which means more time like uh, at home for longer periods or whatever. And I noticed this with my little ones. Like when I go, when I'm home, after about a day or two, my kids get really attached to me, my little ones. Like when we're playing, they're coming to me and they want to come to me more often and whatever. And then when I leave uh, on Monday, they're, they have a tough time with it. And they, it's almost like they have to disconnect from me for a, for a day or two. Cause then I go home and I can tell that they kind of disconnect a little bit. And then when I come home, then it takes me a second to read it. So it's almost like going back and forth from work mm. uh, is like connect, disconnect. Like I noticed their, with, with their behaviors. Are you noticing anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean um, like, I mean, Max and I are like connected at the hip already as it is, but he's not used to seeing daddy home for that many hours for that many days in a row. And so is it and, harder to go back? Yeah. And yeah. so there's, uh, you know, on, on Mondays, which I literally just right before we got this podcast, I text Katrina. I said, you know, how, how did Max go? And we also had this last week for him was spring break. Mm -hmm. So he had the whole day off on top of it. So then it makes it yeah. even more difficult when we're in his routine and he's going to school, seeing daddy after, you know, three o'clock is, 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 is very normal for his routine. But uh, you know, this new schedule where I'm home all day with him on those days, uh, is he's definitely like, you know, and I, and him and I play so much. And so it's just like, he gets used to that. And yeah. it's just like, you know, I don't want to go to school today. I want to just play with dad all day. Well, dad's got to go to work and you got to go to this. And so there's a bit of that, um, um, on Mondays now when we, when we go back, yeah. it's a little, it's a little difficult. Yeah. It's like usually by the, the third day, uh, I see it a big difference with my little ones. Like they're just on me, my daughter, you know, hold her and she'll often look back at me. Gives me a smile. She goes, Papa. And then she like does her kiss. She doesn't really kiss. She just comes at me with her little open mouth or whatever. So yeah. I, I let her do that. And it's like that. And then when I leave, I notice that they're kind of like upset. Don't go, don't go, don't go type of deal. And I wonder how much of of this uh, uh, happens with adults too. Just, we just kind of like put it aside. You know what I mean? Like if you're like a, a new mom, I, I bet this happens to new moms. This has happened to new moms where you're like your new mom. Okay. My baby now what's, how long do you typically take six months? Six. Is it six months? Is that what maternity leave, yeah. leave is? Is it six months or is it less? It's typically six months. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like six months and but there's then, example, my best friend and his, they were back three months back at it. So yeah, like that. Like three, I thought paid maternity like was less. Oh, I don't know what their, their paid is. What's paid maternity? Like yeah, three, I thought. I thought it was three months. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's up to 12 weeks of unpaid job protected leave okay so right. 12 weeks yeah okay so 12 weeks and a lot of a lot of moms have to go back to work yeah and i would imagine that they have to subconsciously or psychologically disconnect to go back to work and hey, then to come home you know have you ever heard katrina talk about it mm -hmm. no so it was i mean it's it's interesting hearing her perspective because she's such a um uh, like she, my wife never wanted to be a stay at home mom. Like that was never like even a thought, right? She was always going to work. She loves work. She has, she's driven by that stuff. She's a, a very type a when it comes to stuff like that. Um, and so that was always like, okay, you know, she's going to go back to work after so many weeks. Yeah. And that was the reason for her leaving JJ Albany's was that she had got to a point where uh, it was time to go back and it landed literally on a day where uh, Max was like kind of sick and she had to head off to work. And she said, leaving our son with him not feeling well to go to a job. And then she goes, especially considering in our situation where she doesn't need to work. Yeah. She was choosing to work because yeah. I, man, I can't imagine not having that option. She had that option. And then she was like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. And she said she was a, just a disaster the whole day at work. And she's like, I'm not doing this. And then that was the the whole uh, beginning of her leaving that that job was that she had realized, like, she didn't realize how difficult that was going mm -hmm. to be in her head. She had, you know, pictured it differently. Yeah. And it was just, it hit her like a ton of bricks and it tore <sighs> her up. And she's like, oh, no, I can't do this. I know it's tough for me. It's with a the, tough transition. Yeah, because I, I was different as a, with, you know, my older kids, I was very disconnected, not present, worked all the time. So psychologically, it was like, you know, just this is what I do. Way more involved uh, with my younger ones. You know, once I got divorced, I really realized that, oh shit, like this is something I need to do and I missed it, missing out. So way more involved. And I find myself like even like oh man i gotta like leave i'm not gonna be with the kids mm. you know type of deal 
that's kind of tough. It's got to be so much harder for moms because they're already so connected, connected yeah, anyway, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. naturally. So, I mean, my heart breaks for somebody who has to do that, yeah. especially living in a, a state like this. I think this the only way to get through it is like you almost have to either tell yourself it's okay. You have to disconnect. disconnect. You, yeah. yeah. You have to pretend. You have to pretend like you don't care. I mean, I think that's the only way that you you make it through that situation is that you just have to pr pretend. Speaking you know? of which, I was talking to a friend of mine yeah. who, uh, great guy, really great guy. You know who he is. I won't say his name, uh, but really, really great guy. And he's uh, he's 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 got, I think he's got two or three kids all adopted. So he adopted his mm -hmm. kids and he, they, him and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted them. And he adopted them when they were babies. So they had just been born and he adopted them. And he says, you know, there's this thing when you ad ad adopt a baby that there's always this like, you, you always have to contend with this, um, this like abandonment that they deal with, even when they're just babies. Right. People who adopt babies talk about this and say, "Oh yeah, you, there's there's these struggles because even though the, they're, even though they're just born and you take them, that they can somehow notice that they right, were disconnected a, yeah. from mom, that the person they were with, and he's and so he says there are these patterns where they'll test you as they grow up. They'll test you like, are you going to stick around? Are you going to stick uh, around? Right. Push it, push it, and push it." Interesting. Like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, and he said that to me, and I'd heard that before from someone else who was uh, who also adopted babies who said the same thing. That, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like when they get separate, Which would, I would it's imagine. like the surrogate moms and stuff. Like, uh, it's I'm sure it's not just benign. You know, that yeah. they carry your baby, and you, then it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. They, I'm sure there's something there. Right? Of course, well, little babies you yeah, perceive a lot more than we give them credit. You know, totally. Like, it's, it's a lot of that like stays stays in them. Well, speaking of like it. it that sort of transition like so uh, with my oldest with ethan like what i've noticed that was interesting because he's always been like pretty easy pretty chill kid in terms <laughs> of like um you know it, there might be a struggle to do something sometimes and i gotta kind of motivate him whatever okay. but i haven't really had a lot of issues or problems but it seems as though like the testosterone is is really like changing cranking him? up yeah like to the point where he's like just disagreeable like to a level like I've never seen, <laughs> you know, and we're just like He's this. He's a teenager, bro. Dude, but like, it's just like, it's almost, that's so it happened you over always, weekend. You always compare him to Max. Like when I tell you stories about Max, you're like, oh, yeah. that's how Ethan was. Ethan was such an easy so chill. go, chill. So how wild is that for you? It's it's weird, man. Like, honestly, I didn't, I didn't foresee that because his personality is so, um, well, I just, I kind of knew what to do. And it was like, I didn't have to do a lot. Like, I didn't have to like really come in with guns blazing or, or like, <laughs> you know, strategize too much. How I'm going to figure out how to like turn his behavior around or anything. He's just like easy, chill, like yeah. good kid. Um, and it's not that he's not a good kid. It's just that he's just, he wants to like find up any opportunity to be like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and like, like bait me to, to <laughs> you know, come at me for things. And I'm just like, Whoa, you know, like what is all this energy? And he's, yeah. he's definitely, his body's changed. Like he's like getting pretty muscular now. And like, yeah, he's, yeah. he's 14. taller, 14. This is when it all happens. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's a, it's weird, dude. Like, honestly, like I, I kind of foresee that with, with Everett having a lot more battles in that regard. But like with Ethan, I thought Listen, it was gonna be easy. You so, have, I have kids in both categories. Okay. And I remember parents telling me this when my older kids were toddlers, like my, for example, my daughter, when she was a toddler, she would throw tantrums that were just, I mean, they were epic. Like you just, <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't wait yeah. till she outgrows this. And I'd have friends with teenage kids and they'd be like, bro, I wish my kid was a toddler. I would deal with that way over teenage. The teenagers are the worst. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Yeah. It's worse. <laughs> it gets worse because they're they can talk, they're intelligent, they're there's more on lo on the line, they'll push back, and then you feel like what is going on? Yeah, here? And, and it's like, like do so, I cry to, do I do do I start a war? Do we make this a so war? So how did you or? so how did you handle it? Did you did you because it caught you off guard, were you reactive? Were did you find yourself having to step out of the moment and then like I mean, how did you handle it? And no. then was he receptive to how you dealt with it? Like I think because do you think you did it right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think I handled it okay. Like I I think um because it's so new, I, I kind of I I thought it was more funny than anything. Right, you so probably gave I, him I just some kinda, latitude. Yeah, I was kind of like Oh wow! Like it, really? Like you you want to come at me like that? And then, uh, you know, we discuss like what was going on. I'm like, you know, are you frustrated with something? Like, where's all this coming from? You know, I was like trying to like dig a little deeper and, yeah, and yeah. see like what the root of it was. But it's really there's no root of it. It's just the f like he just wants to press it against something. Yeah, yeah. Right now, and yeah, yeah. so uh, I tried. I I really try to like not react and, and like have more of like. 
I challenge with jokes and, and, and we'll kind of poke back a bit. And yeah. then if it's, if it's something that where he's like, you know, out of line, I'm going to come in. Yeah, I'm going to come in hard. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then he knows his place again. And then we start over, you know, yeah. and that's kind of what had to happen. Yeah. So yeah. I did come down. I mean, I feel like, uh, because, you know, again, you, you compare, uh, him to a lot of the behaviors that I see in max and everything like that. And just being so sensitive and soft and like, there's probably a part of you that actually is likes it. I would think that because I know that that's a part of you. Like, I mean, yeah. that, that he's got edge to him now and he's got a little bit of a, which I would think that, that that's because that's one of the things I, 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 I worry about with Max. Mm -hmm. Like, man, he's so it's soft. very similar so to when you sensitive. describe that. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm like, the, like, you know, I'd be okay with him being a little bit of a prick every once in a while because <laughs> I want to see that edge to him. You know what I'm saying? Because his life is rough. It's life is not easy and you uh, got to have a bit of an edge to you. So is, there's got to be a part of you that is, likes that out of him i would think yeah i do i i think yeah to a degree but yeah it's <laughs> it's new to yeah, it's until challenging it's, me until like it's challenging I, me right He's yeah like, not challenging me and i'm like wait a minute like don't uh, forget who the king up, of the house dude. is you know who the you know king king lion is in this house yeah, you yeah. know like um but yeah it's at the same time yeah i do i want him to have opinions i want him to have you know, um, be able to kind of stand up for himself and, uh, you know, all that. So it is, it is good to see that he has that more of that energy. And like, he, he knows he has really good values and morals established already. And I'm not worried about that. It's just like, He's a good uh, like no, no when and where, you know, to challenge, like we're mm. working on that. I, I, uh, I've been reading a lot about like, uh, what's considered developmentally appropriate as kids grow up. That is really helpful. You know, like, Kids who are between one and three, te like making them share with other kids in their mind, they that doesn't make any sense. It's either mine or it's not mine. Yeah. And so if you force like a two year old to share, no, you have to share. What you're actually teaching them is to people please. Yes. Is you're teaching them just to make other kids happy. Now once they're older, then they understand the concept. So it's not developmentally. Well, that's the other hard part you're, too. Is is when they're have a difficult um, kid that like they don't want to be friends with. Yeah. And, and the teacher and the like parent, and they're them. having like, you know, these, um, counseling sessions and it's like, look, he doesn't like your kid and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't yeah. have to like your kid, yeah, yeah. you know, and this whole like coddling of everything, he has to be like nice and fun. That's people like, pleasing. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't need to do it, but he does have to be respectful. He does have to be nice. He does have to be like, I don't want to play with you. Like I'm okay with that. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting the way the Montessori school handled the sharing and stuff like that. They don't do that. Like they don't like uh, tell the kid, like you have to share. If a kid's playing with a toy and another kid comes over to take it, it's like, no, 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 no. He's playing with that. When he decides he's done with it, then he can tell, he'll tell you when he's done with it. So that's how they, they manage that. They don't. Yeah. So, so like learning, some, like some like, people like force that, right? Share, give it to him. Let him, it's like. That's what I'm saying. So yes. understanding what's developmentally appropriate makes a big difference because like, let's say you have a, a teenager and you give them unfettered access to their phone and you're like, Hey, listen, don't go on this website. Don't do this. Don't do that. You're asking them to do something they can't do. They don't have the ability to do it. Yeah, it's huh. just like, when, like but with my toddler, like if he's, if he's doing something and we're playing and then he notices I'm on my phone, he'll hit something off the table to get my attention. Now getting mad at him for that is it, that's his impulse. His impulse is to get dad's attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not, I'm being a, you know, I want to be a jerk or something like that. So it makes a big difference. Cause then you can talk to your kid and be like, okay, this is developmentally appropriate or uh, no, this is something I need to coach, you know, type of deal. Totally. But I know teenagers are just, it's like you're trying to find your <laughs> independence somehow. It, it is it's fiercely independent yeah. uh, energy for sure. Yeah. I also think it's so crazy how too, like little, th you, I don't know if I, I share this with you guys. It was such a cool moment for me. Um, after I had that talk with Max, the whole, the, the, like my first real big talk with him. And he was making a comment to Katrina. I overheard him and they were, they were like doing schoolwork like that. And he told her that, no, mommy, Schaefer's don't give up. And I was like, oh, my God, the fact that he remembered yeah. that from yeah. that conversation, that w only one time that I had to sit him down and I said that to him and then wondering, like, okay, did I say this right? Did I, did I, did I make the impact I wanted to? And then to hear him repeat that to her when they were working something like that and him not to say like no mommy chafers don't give up i'll i'll keep doing it with that i was like oh, oh. Yeah. huge like huge dad win but it's That's it's great. wild how they choose to pick up the most subtle things sometimes it's like that's like one time being said to you 
and it made an impact enough in his brain that there uh, uh, come come another situation and it was a, and it's like man how crazy is that when you think about those all those moments in a child's life that you have this opportunity to really go one way or the other, you know what I'm saying? On like, it could have went the complete opposite way, right? Like it could have been reactive in that situation. And then who knows like what that would have like formed. By the way, you know what's messed up about that is you're going to mess up. So I think people listening right now, like <clears throat> you're going to mess up. You're not going to be perfect. Sure. And it's important to know that because, you know, I could do that. I could look back and be like, oh man, oh, yeah. damn, why did I do that? Mm. Oh, why did I, oh. I hate that. There'll you know? be some cringe moments. Oh yeah. yeah, you ever have that moment where your kid, like, you raise your voice or something, and then they get just they get scared. You realize how scared they are. You're like, what am I doing? You know, terrifying I, my kid. Dude. You know, that's something that I think. Uh, I think like I obviously so many people tell tell me right and say like, oh, you're you know you you're bound to fuck up. That's part of being a parent. I think that uh, of course now of course I approach it with the attitude of like I'm not going to. I'm going to work towards of it. Now what I realize is that that's probably going to happen. And the most important thing is that I'm aware of that, that when it does happen, that I have a conversation with them and I admit that. Yes. So that's the part where I, that's the that part- That changes where, the story. That's where parents fuck up. Yeah. See, it's it's okay to have a, a situation where you're not perfect as a parent. That's not the real fuck up. The real fuck up is to not done the right thing and then not go back and have a conversation yeah. and say that yeah. you were wrong and say, Boy, hey, you know what? It. Daddy didn't handle that right. Yeah. I- I definitely got upset. I shouldn't have said that yep. to you and I'm sorry. And and then admit you were wrong and, and, and have that conversation. That is what, that's the shit that causes long life trauma for that kid because you fucked up as a parent. You weren't man enough to admit to your kid that you made a mistake and you, and you saw and, and do it relatively soon. It can't be like, you know, otherwise they got 10 years of trauma and you're finally admitting you fucked up 10 years ago. It's right. like, it's being able to be aware as a parent when those moments happen of like, oh, that probably wasn't. You know, it's another big one that I, I know I messed up a lot in the past is not calling things out and talking about them uh, because you think, oh, my kids aren't noticing. Like, it's, I think everything's okay. They're not saying anything. So we're just going to move along. Yeah. But kids can tell, like, like after I got divorced, it was like, we just kind of moved forward mm -hmm. and the kids seemed okay. So I'm not going to like sit them down and talk with them and bring it up. And I know it's tough right now and I know it's weird and whatever. And, you know, I said a couple of times and I left it, but they notice, they feel, they just kind of like go along. Like, I guess we're just moving in this direction. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're, if you're tense with your wife and you're at home and the kids are around, and you're like, you don't say anything to the kids. You don't have to break it down. Hey, your mom this morning did this or whatever. You could literally just say, hey, mom and I are a little tense right now. You probably notice it because yeah. we had an argument earlier. Like if you don't call it out, the kid is like, what is going on? This well, they, a lot weird. of times they, they will- They create their own story. They'll internalize yeah. it as their fault. Or their right. fault. Yeah, yeah. Or they're so sense. young, they don't even, they can't even think about it. They just know yeah. that it's weird. Right. Or or worse, that becomes the, like any sort of bad behaviors, right? Yelling, fighting, stuff like that becomes, they normalize it. And then they think- Yeah, because nobody said anything the next yeah, day. Yeah, so then they think that that's what their relationship should <laughs> yeah, be like later older. So it's fuck. Yeah, no. I know. You know, speaking of kids- um, uh, I, if you, you know, you're not on social media right now. So I've, I get DMS for you. I have two things for oh, you. Oh, cool. Thank so, you. Yeah, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're taking all your DMS. Yeah. yeah I mean, so, I wasn't on there anyway. Yeah, I had so a, we more had, work for me. You I know, know, this is awesome. Long. I would get it relayed by our, yeah. by my, by uh, so, Chokey. But yeah, no, I get now. I can't believe by the way, they kicked me off again for no damn yeah, reason. It's, it's, I cannot believe it's, it, they're not kicking you off. For no I don't even know. It. Is it, the people are, people are complaining. Somebody doesn't like me. But what did I do? It's all right. Somebody doesn't like me. Cause it's just like you and I, we've talked about this the other day. Like we have people don't, there's a lot of people that don't like you. Just like a lot of people don't like me. By the way, by the way, more people don't like you. Did you see the poll that I wrote? <laughs> Here, we go. I just, Here we go. I'm pretty sure Did I you see the poll. I'm pretty sure I didn't agree. I, I didn't this disagree with that. Up I fucking show. know that I am the hey, least liked. I'm one very vote. aware. Did you know that? I beat you by one, one vote. vote. <laughs> yeah, it was one vote, <laughs> bro. Justin and Justin would just landslide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. landslide. I, most likable. Everybody knew yeah. that. You know, I have my whole family going. They're going there. Vote. I'm actually proud that I was even one within you. I'm saying I thought it would be like a landslide. You know, saying I think early days they were trying to replace me. So that's what's like. Fine, replace me. I'd love to. Let me do less shit. I'm all about it. Uh, anyway, so what happened? What'd you get the? So uh, what's the well, relay? There's two. Two. Uh, well, I'll remind you the probiotic one, which I, I want to pull up. And <coughs> two. Um, people were asking me because uh, I think we must have mentioned something about kids and vitamins and stuff like that. Like, what are the things that you like? You tend to use with your kids, like as far as like the brands and the supplements, the things that we that we are partnered with that we yeah. talk about. What are the things that like you're you most consistently use with your children? Yeah, so I just started. So we just got. I'm gonna look this up because I want to make sure I, I represent this uh, properly. We just got a new product from Organifi 
called Protect, which is, this is an immune supplement to help bolster the immune system. Um, and I like it. And the kids like, I mean, the taste is not bad at all. It's actually really good. Yeah. It has acerola cherry, which is high in vitamin C and antioxidants. Mm. Astragalus, which has for years been known to be good to fight off viral infections. Um, it has elderberry. We know about that for, and that studies will show that's good for influenza. Yep. Uh, olive leaf. This is an antibiotic, antibacterial, antiviral, antioxidant, antifungal, natural. Um, then there's propolis, which has also been shown to help boost the immune system or, or its function. Uh, more orange juice for the vitamin C, acacia fiber, which supports good gut bacteria, vitamin D3 and zinc. So is this, so like, this, a, is like, an product. Is this like an immune bo boosting yeah. product for kids? Yep. So if your, so kid, if your kid starts getting a little, oh, uh oh, oh looks like you're fantastic. getting sick. Yeah. That's actually really cool. It because, tastes good. Because I just, I mean, the green juice was like just the go-to just yeah. in general uh and my kids would actually drink it so we yeah. we would supplement with that but well this, this is this, this is cool great. because i was just talking to you recently about you know this was been ever since we met i've been better about myself when i'm yeah. around people that are sick and i've noticed a massive difference in not that whether i get sick or not but how uh how bad it is like yeah. it's like i feel like it's 50 percent less yeah. like as far as the symptoms yeah like all these herbs and stuff that i just listed have been used either in certain traditions ayurvedic medicine chinese medicine for a long time hundreds of years some of them for thousands of years for illness um some of them have studies to support them elderberry for example some of them uh maybe it's mixed but they've been used traditionally for these reasons but they're not going to stop you necessarily from getting sick. What they will do in the studies show, like elderberry, for example, is it reduces the severity and the duration. Yeah. So you'll get the flu, but it'll last two days less and you won't be as severe. That's yeah. And that's what I noticed yeah. personally for myself from doing that. So I love this yeah. because- you know, you always know at this, like at back to school, we know when this, this stuff is going around, right? Yeah. Right now, it's, it's like inevitable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And All so if I can be sick. proactive about having him add this to his yeah. drink, and this is the powder form, just like the yeah. green juice. Yeah. Okay. And this tastes, this one's really good. Okay. That's yeah. cool. And you know, kids, you got to have it taste good. Otherwise, oh, <laughs> good know. luck, you know, with that. Yep. The, the, other, the other supplement that I use, uh, this no, no partner involvement or whatever. My daughter, is, she can't eat eggs. If she eats eggs, she starts to get a little bit of like eczema. Mm. Um, and that sucks because egg yolks in particular are so nutrient dense. Yeah. And they're very high in choline. And choline is really important for brain development. So I, I just recently started giving my daughter a col like a, a baby choline supplement um, because I, we read that. What was that study that you, you brought up or I brought up, Adam, because you, you wanted me to talk about it, that showed that kids who consumed eggs regularly, their IQ... Was oh, so much yeah. higher. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Than kids who didn't, and I'm like, this it's got to be the choline. Yeah, it's got to be the choline. Choline is very important for brain. Uh, so you just reminded me of something, and I should. Uh, I'm. So, I feel so bad. I don't have the person. I should. I wanted to shout the person out, and give them the, their the love for for doing this. But we talked about that. So they actually yeah. posted a recipe for French toast that they use to boost the eggs in it. And so I'll give it for the audience so they can have it. So whisk together. One egg per slice of bread. She uses two eggs, she says. Splash of milk, dash of cinnamon. Cinnamon, hello. <laughs> when a skillet is heated up, dip the Welcome whole grain the bread in both sides. <laughs> uh, once in the pan, pour the remaining egg mixture over the bread. Get it all, all that egg in there. Uh, when it's ready, cube it up and toss in a teaspoon of like organic pure maple syrup or just, you know, put a little bit of fruit. We actually even sprinkled a little a little bit of powdered sugar on it with some fruit for him and cut him up in squares. And now he's getting like two eggs in this like Great. French toast uh, recipe. And he absolutely- Do you know my son, my, my three-year-old, will eat between, okay? Because we only give him yolks because the whites, he started, he was getting a reaction. Although I think now we're probably outgrown it. He'll eat between two to no joke, six egg yolks a day. Wow. Now breakfast is two yolks, but sometimes the other day, he's throughout the day, you know, Papa, can you make me eggs and toast? Sure. Papa, can you make me, it's like three times he had it. So he's having all this, this, the, these egg yolks with all this um, incredible nutrients, That's which by so the way, another study came out showing that they're not bad for you. I hate it when people talk about how eggs can be bad for you or whatever. That's such a crazy, ridiculous. No, not true. They're very, very, very healthy. Unless you have like a, eggs have been targeted more than anything else because they're high like, cholesterol. Good, bad, but good, bad. dietary cholesterol doesn't raise cholesterol. We know That's that. It's like so old news, yeah. right? Yeah. However, I mean, look, there, there may be some morphologies where you know you're you have an interesting way of producing cholesterol and it affects you, and it, of course it's in the context of your total diet and all that stuff. But for most people, like this is like it's one of the it's like nature's multivitamin. Yeah, is an egg. 
Yeah, the other DM that I had got was you called it the GLP one supplement pro- probiotic. Yeah, I told you guys. Yeah. So <laughs> it's already already going like crazy. I'm telling you guys, these GLP one agonists are going. They're going to be so impactful. It's going to mold society. And there's going to be my so many people misusing it. Like I guarantee it. I would have. I would have. It's going to change markets. It's going to mold society. This there's going to be. It's going to be like birth control. Yeah. You remember when birth control? Okay, that's a great example. Birth control shifted society. You mm. can you can literally look at society before birth control, society after birth control. That's how much of a groundbreaking, uh, you know, medical intervention that was. Uh-huh. The GLP ones, I believe, we're going to look back in twenty years and we're going to say pre and post GLP one agonist. So this is the normal time when I insert myself and argue with you about something, but going through it, I do not disagree at all. Yeah. I mean, it's. There's nothing like it, dude. There is nothing that we have ever seen before that has this kind of power to it. And I was hearing all the all the rumors from client, clients, friends, yeah. people that I know that have taken it and everything like that, but uh, not realizing how crazy until I did it, until I got and use, started using it. And it's it's wild, dude. It's um, <laughs> there's a lot of things I don't like though. You know, like I I miss I actually how funny is this. I miss the hedonistic desires for food. <laughs> I do. There's a, I like, I miss. So this is, this is interesting. It's interesting you say that. I miss. What does that mean? It means that fucking food sucks. Well, what I mean. My no, favorite no, no, foods are just. the high highs you used well, to. Well, no, no. It like means something eating. more. It means something more than that. So okay. whatever you got from that now, like, I wonder if that's going to. I wonder if that's going to open anything else up for you. Like, okay, what was that satisfying? Why yeah, do I you miss know, that? I, so that's interesting. I wonder, right? That's an interesting thing to speculate on. Like so far, and I, of course, you know me, I'll tell you guys everything or as I go through this. Like, I don't have a desire to to reach or do or like, it's not like my smoking weed consumption went up or I'm like, I'm like gravitating. So like, I, I, I need this other hedonistic yeah. desire. Like right. nothing else is like, in fact, if anything, all of those hedonistic things are tamped way down or less in my life, right? There's no. Do you, so, do you think the GLP one affected those two? It's like a dietary antidepressant or something. Le- less than you would think. Like, um, okay. like so, I I didn't feel I'm not um, like like I'm uh, like I, I almost feel turned off by food. Uh, I'm not turned off by smoking weed. Like okay. it's still that's still a nice thing that I enjoy okay. occasionally, right? Um, but the the enjoyment of a, of a meal, uh, is gone. I don't, I don't enjoy, we went out to this, we went out to, uh, Teleferic. Is that how I say it? Teleferic? Teleferic. Teleferic. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a tapas place. Yeah. Tapas place we really like. So we yeah. took Katrina's mom for her birthday, uh, this weekend there and, you know, oh. big, huge family style thing. And cause you know, enjoyment of food is not a bad thing. No, it's just when it gets abused or it gets prioritized wrong. Right. But you know, you know how weird it was. You know, how late, we were there for three hours. Her family eats, drinks like crazy, yeah. right? So they, so they, it was like a, we were there, literally there. Like for, even the flavors and everything, they don't like pop out at you. None, dude. Huh? And 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 it really hit home for me for this this dinner, right? So we got the whole family there, yeah. big, big old table reserved out. We did the the family style too. So they, you know. Three forty ounce tomahawks. We had the uh, paella, three big paellas. All I mean, they just food was coming the whole time for three hours, food and drink. And one, I had to be re- the tomahawk didn't come out till later, which is the only thing I was really like I need to eat that because I need to get my protein. Yeah. All this other stuff is just like filler stuff. So one, I was already like picky and choosy because I'm like I don't want to get filled up on some you know <sighs> some bread and then I can't even eat, eat meat. I know I got to do that. So, you know, I had a, a few things. I just, I'm sitting there. I'm the only one just sitting there, like sitting at the table, not drinking alcohol. I'm not eating anything. And we're at this, now, of course, I'm talking with my wives with that. But there's a lot of moments where people are like enjoying their food. Oh, try this, this, that. And I'm just like, <laughs> sitting at the end of the table. Like, yeah. you know what I felt like? I felt like the person who was like choosing not to. Do. So, you know what? It, okay. So it was like really annoying. Everyone's just like, Adam, try and this. They're this. folding your arms. Just like, hmm. Yeah, I was. I was yeah. just, and, and they're like, oh, have some of this or here. You want another one of these? I'm like, no, it's like, I, I want to, I want to make sure I can eat some of the tomahawk when it comes. And, but it just, so I had, so this makes me speculate on some interesting stuff. So using the birth control uh, example, we separated the risk or the potential of having a child with the act of intercourse. And we didn't really think that through in the sense of, we just thought, oh, cool. 
we're going to have less unwanted, you know, births or whatever. So this should be a good thing. But separating sex from, you know, the potential, actually, there's a lot more ramifications societally and just how we are behaviorally. And we know this now looking back, like it's, it's had some, it's done some, some, there's some good stuff. And then there's some bad stuff that we didn't really um, see through, understand because it was too complicated. I wonder if, you know, separating the pleasure of eating from food, what, what could that potentially, is that going to change the way people connect? What's that going to do? Bro, a hundred percent. You know what I mean? It was a very, it was a very. Is it going to be like a, I mean, will it be a net positive, net negative? Mm. I mean, a net positive for somebody who has a very dysfunctional relationship yeah. with it, right? Like if you have a very uh, dysfunctional relationship with food and it very much so is your drug and you used it mm -hmm. as a coping, it's going to do wonders for that person. I'm not that person, right? I don't have this yeah. weird awkward relationship with food and I don't use it to suppress my feelings right, like right. you know and I and I don't even really drink and really indulge in that type of food except for in an environment like that that's my whole family's there and we're all everyone's picking and enjoying and I'm not really enjoying the food and it so it's kind of a bummer yeah, it's but a, when you're looking at the I didn't have the American. cake the cake comes out for it it was a of a, a shoot by my sister-in-law went to a fucking real Italian bakery and had like a and my type of cake too real light like no desire for it, dude. Didn't even <laughs> want to taste it. Wow. So <laughs> it's fucking lame. Well, when you have the average, <laughs> you look at America, right? The average American is overweight. So it's like 60%, I think, is overweight. Yeah. And then 40% is obese. Yes. But let's just look at the 60% overweight. That's 170 or 100 something million people potentially. What if, and it's so, this peptide has so low side effects that we know of. Like, could you imagine where it's like, well, no, everybody's going to go on this because everybody just overeats. And, and what could that, like, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the potential unknown. Okay. Behavioral unknown. Yeah. Right? Cultural unknown. Yeah, for sure, net positive, in yeah, my opinion. Initially, it's going to be a big positive. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be net, out of control. Net, oh. what, what you have to always remember, right? So this this is the, the uh, you know, fitness fanatic, weightlifting, right, 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 muscle right. trainer guy sharing his story. Like, sure. I'm not the candidate for this. I'm really right, not, right, right, right. right? I'm not, I'm not the 60%. Yeah. But for those people, this is going to, I think it can be life changing. But then the the, the thing that I, I, I'm not sure about yet, and the verdict's still out, is that, you know, the same reason why I told my, my three family members why I don't want them <sighs> to take it yet is I know where they're at metabolically. And is it really going to serve them to eat less when they're already- So I'm not even thinking of the physiological stuff because we talked about that. I'm on board with that. I'm talking about the the behavioral, cultural, like you know how many cultures revolve around sure. or have been created around eating food, All tradition, and connection. get together. I mean, my yeah. culture, my family's yeah, yeah, culture, yeah. I should yeah. say, right? You know, like- where, where they come together, they cook together, they do these things together, they, they bond. It's the centerpiece. Of Is it like, going to change yeah. that? I, when all I, of a sudden everybody's like, I don't want to eat. I, I, so we had- I um, wonder. You yeah. know, it's- it's Because I'm telling you, this I've is already had a couple, I've, I've had, so on Friday, no, excuse me, Saturday, uh, we had we had Vicky and my cousin come over for the fights. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, I hadn't eaten all day long again, and I'm thinking like, man, you know what would be great is if I wanted to have fucking pizza or something right now. <laughs> Like I wanted to want to do that, yeah, yeah, but it didn't even sound good. And so there's this like bummer of, and I like, and I had to, so I had to tell them when they came over to my house, say, hey, just want to let you guys know, like, if and when you get hungry, like, let Katrina know because you're not gonna hear anything from me. Like, I'm not gonna. Normally, I'm the one who like takes charge and yeah. be like, I'm hungry. You guys want this? You want that? And like, I'm doing all the all that stuff. And I like have to tell people like, hey, I could easily go all day today and not eat. Wow. And so if you guys were wanting to do like a food and snack and this please don't not do it because i'm not saying anything or i'm not like so just weird and, and a, a bummer a bummer to watch these great fights and not get to indulge a little bit and even want to indulge so weird so man. it's really i mean it's all speculation i'm doing right now right but i definitely think it's going to shift society that's how powerful these things are yeah i it's just I, I mean I, i'm i'm i miss I miss liking those things. It's a, it's a true. I will say this, and I don't know. Did you just did you put Caldera on your face before we started podcasting? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. you're, I'm like your skin looks Shiny. well. <laughs> and I, so it's got to be the reduction in calorie, but then you put Caldera on, which always makes. You I look. mean, Caldera is. I mean, that's become. I don't know if I miss a day. I'd be honest with you. Like I'm. That's become a staple. I always see you put it on. Yeah, it's become a staple that I I utilize their stuff. That that and their soap. I have, I absolutely love. I haven't used a soap yet. I know. I can't. Believe, but you're not a soap guy. So no. I'm like. But I like. Like absolutely love their their soap. You said you were saying it like lathers really well. 
Mm-hmm. Who is that? Doug said no, that. No, I said that. It's okay. like the like the best lathering bar of soap I've ever had in my life. Like that it's like bar none. Like nobody's ever I've never used a bar of soap that lathers so well. Uh. So it's a it's it's really and I and it, it doesn't have like so I'm really particular about like the hippy dippy smell. I don't like that. Don't, oh, when they're like all natural. <laughs> yes. They like, smell like a patchouli, thanks. Yeah. Yes, yeah. dude. I don't like that. It bothers me. It's, I don't know what patchouli. it is. Yeah, so it Justin doesn't hates that. Oh yeah, I don't like. <laughs> I don't, me angry. I don't, I don't like it either. It I, don't, like I really dirt. don't like that. And I know. I mean, I'm sure the the, the person who does smell like that, it's like, oh, well, that's more natural. That's yeah. what, you know, you're so used to all the chemicals. Yeah. Okay, full of the whatever. cancer. I'm like, I am. Hey, I am. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but I'm, I'll admit that. Whatever. I don't like. I don't like this. So I don't get that from that, which I like that. So it makes me happy that I don't have to smell like a like a hippie and actually use feel like I'm using something that's good for my skin. But back to what you notice with. Uh, probably also in my skin, my psoriasis with the low. Your gut's getting a big break. Bro, You're eating so yeah. little. It's been, it's never been this, this damp down. Like I ain't have to, I ain't have to use There's my cream. There's nothing on your head. There's nothing yeah, going on it's anymore. It's like, yeah, it's the best it's ever been, dude. And which that, that led me to what I told you earlier about like, you know, why? Cause can, you know, who's having the hardest time with this? My wife, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> she every day, dude. So you know, when's big? Adam so what, <laughs> what? What is it you like about this? I'm like, oh my I, god! Yeah. So I don't. I don't. Bro, she's challenging. Oh, she's so fucking hard, challenging me every day. Like, I'm like, hun. I'm like, I'm not. She's like, so would you do this if you didn't? If you didn't? If you? Uh, if you didn't get it for free, would you like? Would you actually pay? For, I'm like, hun. This whole thing for me is a, a, a project, so I can communicate to our audience and our clients and help other people out. And of course, while I'm going through it, I'm speculating, I'm I'm being introspective on myself, I'm like trying to learn. And so I don't have I don't have these feelings that you're searching for me to have. I'm not pro it, anti it, I'm like experiencing it. And so when you hear me talk about it, that's what you hear. But she's like, she's wanting definitive answers. Like she wants waffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wants to blow up yeah, she yeah, does. Yeah, she's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. And, she, and, I, and I know that she's heard me say that now, right? So she's trying to be all better about it. Yeah. But it's she's like I she could tell she's struggling with it more than I'm struggling. She's grabbing with. your butt less often. Oh she's man. Like, <laughs> like I'm just I'm all in. I'm like embracing and I'm like, yeah, maybe I was supposed to be that, you know, skinny guy. And thank God I'm beyond all that stuff like i'm you know maybe i'm that's where i'm supposed to be and really the the break on the gut like you're saying is like and what's happening with my psoriasis right now i'm like god was that is that the answer was i just well maybe until you over, heal over maybe until you heal your gut yeah i mean i'm very excited about coming off like yeah. i can't wait because i'm just getting leaner and leaner right now right so i'm just getting shredded and as a byproduct of all this is like, man, I can't wait to come off and then the appetite come back. Because for me, I'm that's what I come and then do use it, do it right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and I and I'll be good about that. Like yeah. I'll just, you know, I'm not gonna push it. I'll just I'll let the, the it, like enjoying food again and eating yeah. a little bit more and the energy from that to fuel the better workouts. And so I'm, and this is where this is also what's motivating this conversation that I'm having on air, but really want to have with you guys off air about like really wrapping our brains around with our experience and knowledge. And now me kind of going through it firsthand on like how I would structure this, like, like optimally for somebody. And I'm actually, I have really, some ideas. I'm actually mm-hmm. really surprised <clears throat> that somebody hasn't done this yet. And that we're just telling people, Oh yeah, go lift weights, and eat lots of proteins. Like, ah, oh, this is a little bit more difficult than you think it is. Mm-hmm. And everybody is just celebrating it because everybody's losing all this body fat. But I'm hearing, I'm getting lots of DMs, by the way, with the more I have this conversation from trainers mm. that are like needing, they're like seeking advice. Like, what do I tell my clients? Because yeah. they're all having the same issue. I've had people, in fact, I was reading a DM right before we got on of people that have had clients <laughs> that have lost 30, 40 pounds, but their body fat percentage has gone up. Yeah, because I lost too much muscle. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I bet what's yep. also happening, which is why I'm, again, I'm trying to really listen to my body. I'm barely training. I bet if I was with as low as calories I'm having, if I was just pushing my body to train easily, I would overtrain yeah. and actually just make it work. That's I would, not a bad, I would a bad lose point. muscle. Yeah. So I really think there's going to be a very sweet I spot. I bet MAPS 15 would be the perfect program for someone on, on, on a GLP one. Th- to me, that's if I was like to, any of our other programs. Yeah, if I, oh, definitely. If I were to construct something, it would look similar to maps 15 because everything else is way too much yeah. way mm-hmm. too much volume for how low a calorie 
that I am, that it would just, I'd be spinning my wheels. It would make no sense. Wow. Speaking of trainers, uh, mindpumptraincourse.com, we have a three-day free training course for trainers. Literally, we teach you um, about getting leads, about how to uh, project how, how much you're going to make and how to get there. And we also teach you how to close deals, how to, how to present personal training and packages of clients and close deals and close big deals. And it's a, it's a totally free course that we put together for all of our, our, our trainers and coaches that listen to the show. And again, it's mindpumptrainercourse.com. Look, it's not what you eat. It's what you digest. What you eat has to get broken down and assimilated so it can get to the target tissues. In other words, the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that you eat need to get digested properly. Well, there's a company called Bioptimizers that has a product called Masszymes. These enzymes are designed for people who eat a diet that's high in protein, that are looking for performance improvements, want to build muscle, it helps break down the food. So it gets to those target tissues better. Also helps with digestion. Go check them out. Go check them out at, on their site at buyoptimizers.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off your order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Haley from California. Hi, Haley. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Doing great. So nice to meet you guys. Um, I actually started listening just about a month ago. Oh, wow. And I've been, yeah, I've been listening a ton. It's like so great. I wish I found it earlier, but you guys have really balanced content and it's been super helpful so far. And I appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you. What can we do? Yeah. So this is, I'm going to read it just so I don't forget anything. Um, all right. So uh, my lifting journey started after a car accident. Um, I broke my femur and my pelvis, um, and it took me about a year to learn to walk again. Um, losing all mobility and strength lit a fire in me to move again. Um, since that time, I've been lifting seriously for about three years. Um, I started lifting with my sister, who's a personal trainer, um, Amy. Um, she taught me how to strength train um, and that I could lift more than I thought I could. Um, I really love to lift. It makes me feel powerful. Um, so right now I weigh 133 pounds. I'm 5'5". Five five. Um, I can do 12 full range chin ups and 10 full range um, pull ups. Wow. I traditional deadlifts five times um, 205. Um, I can do about 20 push ups and bench 95 for eight. Um, I don't squat very much because it causes knee pain, I think, because of the rod in my femur um, that I got placed after my accident. And I think it may have some imbalance or maybe it's like with a torque. I'm not sure. But um, I like doing split squats and lunges and leg press to work my legs. Um, but I'm emailing because I've been struggling to put on muscle this past year. Um, I do put in a lot of effort in the gym, um, but I'm getting married in three months and I want to gain some muscle in my legs. Um, so how can I increase muscle mass and strength in that short time frame? Um, and then just for reference, I'm a registered nurse. Um, so I work 12 hour days. Um, three times a week, and then I'm on my feet most of those days. And then days off, I walk about 6K steps. I don't do cardio, and then I um, I lift weights about four times a week, like two upper body and two lower body days. Awesome. You look incredible. Wow, yeah, you're, you're doing great. Strong. Yeah, you look incredible. Right really, now. really strong. You're <laughs> yeah. doing phenomenal. You know, at some point, uh, progress does slow down, especially when you're doing as well as you are. I mean, um, I don't know very many uh, young ladies that could do 12 – yeah. Chin ups or ten yeah, pull ups. You be stoked on that. Yeah, so you're you're super strong. Um, the advice we would give you to to gain more muscle would be kind of general advice that we would give most people. First off, we would look at your programming, and if you've been doing the same kind of split or workout now for a while, moving it into something different tends to spark new new gains. So, with the, you just said four days a week, it looks sounds like a push pull type of split or upper lower. You said. A three-day-a-week yeah. full-body workout uh, would probably be a good switch. So you would hit the whole body three days a week. We have a great program called MAPS Anabolic, which I think would, would do that for you. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of it would be to increase your calories and go in a calorie surplus of probably about 300, uh, maybe 350 calories above maintenance. And those two things alone should start to spark some more gains. And, and when are you getting married? How long do we have? Um, In June. Okay. Yeah, so I have about two months. Yeah, so you you could you could put on some good lean body mass oh, in that yeah. period of time, and mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to run a bulk right now because you're plenty lean that we could run a bulk and wait till the last say three four weeks before your wedding to lean back out. So you you're, you're okay, and that just the 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 surplus in calories with the program switch 
that in itself should stimulate some new growth. Yeah. If you and if you just did one or the other, you might not see as much results in that short period of time. But if you do both, if you do a calorie bump with a program, switch, now the challenge we'll have is. Uh, if you're going to put her on maps and a ball, you squats. Need to pull the squats yeah. out. That's right. I didn't think of that. Well, uh, do you have access to a sled by chance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just a great way to add excess volume. And that's something I would probably, you know, just throw in there, even if it's uh, at the end of the workout and it's just something continually you're getting stimulus for your legs. Haley, I mean, Haley, when you, okay. So you said you do leg press and that doesn't, that doesn't seem to bother you. Um, yeah. Have you tried a hack squat machine? Does that, is that okay? Or does that bother your knee as well? Um, I, I feel like I feel a little unstable when I try, I, I tried to do it for, um, one of my training, like, um, things that I was doing, but I felt like a little funky in my knee and a little unstable. So I just kind of shied away from it after that. Okay. Being that you had, uh, a rod put in your femur, there probably is, uh, something that's going yeah, on there. Some torque. This would be one of the, this would be one of the rare instances where I would tell someone, yeah. kinda, okay, avoid that exercise. Yeah. We would yeah. just do Bulgarians instead. She, I mean, you could build her legs doing Bulgarians. Oh yeah, totally. For sure. I actually might suggest with her experience, how strong she is already, she could probably handle maps aesthetic and put the emphasis on her legs make her you know for the glutes days. hamstrings yeah. or or glutes quads or hamstrings quads as her focus days use the sled to your point as the volume builders mm -hmm. on the uh focus days and i think she'd see huge huge results so oh, what yeah. you would do is if we did if we did maps aesthetic it's more volume than maps anabolic um you would replace the barbell squats with a lower body exercise of your choice is, is what we would have you do. So that would be the one replacement. It's a three day a week routine, uh, but you're also in the gym two additional days for kind of a short workout. So you'd be working out about five days a week. Does that work with your schedule or is that, uh, is that too much? That would be great. I love going. Um, I would probably do the shorter days on days when I have my shifts. Cause I, I leave early, um, okay. to go to the hospital. Um, but I could totally do that. For sure. Okay. That would be that'd be ideal. I say we send maps aesthetic, and yeah. then if for some reason you feel like it's taxing you, you're overly sore, you're not recovering, you you feel like you're not getting good rest, then we might be doing too much. And then I would go back to maps anabolic and just switch out squats for that. So I think we send you aesthetic, and you head that direction, and then you'll see on focus days you have the you have the opportunity to pick one or two muscle groups that you want to focus on since legs are your primary focus. And I've seen your upper body looks incredible. I would put all my focus on, you know, quads and hamstrings or hamstrings and glutes or something like, so pick two muscle groups like that. And then, and, okay. then, and then in there, we teach you like how to, what, what exercises to pick on those days. Uh, and, and it's oh. just lower intensity workouts. The focus sessions are lower intensity than the, mm -hmm. than the foundational workouts. So we can, we'll send that to you if you don't have it, Haley, and then bump the calories Listen to your body. If you start to feel like it's too much volume, cut the volume down by a good third. So do maybe you know a third less sets per exercise. Don't wait until you burn out because then we we'd have to backtrack. Okay. Does uh, Amy listen to the podcast? Um. Yeah, I think I think she will. Yeah. So, <laughs> I shared it with my family. Uh, you guys, I I heard you guys are in Gilroy. Is that right? Yeah. If, <laughs> if you and Amy want to come down and watch a live recording, uh, let me know. Send back the same place you emailed before, and I'll have them arrange it to where you guys can come in and watch a live recording. Oh, that would be so fun. She would love that, too. That cool. would be great. Very cool. And yeah. then we can talk more about how your journey's going. And uh, good luck with the, the, the wedding coming up, yeah? Oh, awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. You got it. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you guys. All right, Haley. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, for people listening, there are exceptions to the rules that we tend to make, you know, when someone says, Oh, I can't squat cause it bothers me. Um, we tend to say, well, we're going to figure out how to squat, but <laughs> you have a rod in your leg. Yeah. So there are, <laughs> yeah, this, it's a very good exception. Different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I've worked with people like this where there was yeah, yeah, you know, something surgical. They, they like to have metal put on their body and they're limited. Or I had people with ankle, um, procedures done where they had a replacement. Yeah, they just, just had a limited range of motion. To, yeah, work around it. I totally. Mean, yeah, yeah to I think I think the our messaging around squatting and deadlifting the big lifts is primarily, and the reason why I think we we drive so hard is because so many people miss that, and it's the yeah. biggest bang for your buck movements. It yeah. doesn't mean that I can't build a program and show somebody incredible yeah. results and not use them. That's I will say it. this, uh, you know, and I, I think we really got to um, kind of celebrate the shift in the industry. I mean, when have, did you guys ever hear a young woman 
ask you how to gain muscle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Now we're getting questions like that all the time. It's well, really and amazing. Then also, and they're already strong. For my wedding. <laughs> yeah. For my wedding. I never heard that before. Yeah, and uh, she's deadlifting 200 pounds for five. Yeah. yeah. 20 body weight push-ups, benching 95, pulling up 12 times. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, that's yeah, great. So it's awesome. Our next caller is Madison from Minnesota. Hi, Madison. How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Pretty good. 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 Um. So recently, I guess I'll just get right to my question. I don't think it really needs any background, but um, so I recently picked up uh, your MAPS anabolic program, and um, I was listening to a different episode the other day where you told the caller if they planned on doing the advanced three-day schedule or whatever to uh, not worry about the trigger sessions, and I guess my question is, is was that more specific towards his situation? Should I be doing the trigger sessions mm. if I'm doing the three day do remember, version? Do you remember who that I was? I do, and this is a confu- this, There's a confusion here. So we have two programs. There's Maps Anabolic, and then uh, there's Maps yeah. Anabolic yeah. Advanced. Now Maps Anabolic, the original one. Within that, there's two ways to do it. One is a two day a week, and then the other is a three day a week version. And we we call okay. the three day a week version on there, and we need to make sure we change this the the more advanced version. The caller was asking about the other program, Maps Anabolic Advanced, I think, which is different. So, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're following the the original Maps Anabolic, the three day a week yeah, version. Yes, yeah, still do mm-hmm. the trigger sessions. Yes, yeah. The the, the okay. other the other program, the Maps Anabolic Advanced program, doesn't have trigger sessions in it. It's a totally different. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, a totally it's different program. Intensity. Yeah. Since we got okay. you, since we got you on the phone and we are talking about this, it's it, I always like to to clarify the trigger sessions too. When you do them, it's not like the rest of your your training and your workout. There, it's really light. It's really easy. It should not be something that you're just you, getting a little pump. You shouldn't break a sweat. Okay. It, it shouldn't. You shouldn't be struggling to finish the reps. You're literally just kind of pumping blood in the muscles. That's it. It's supposed to be, it should be feel more rejuvenating. You should do it and feel energy energized afterwards and not like you did a workout. So that the one mistake okay. that people make when they do trigger sessions is they overdo them. They're designed to like facilitate recovery. And so it's more about just sending a signal real light and easy. Just keep yeah. that in mind. Did you just start the program? Uh, no. So I currently have about six weeks left in my current program with a local trainer and i just happened to pick it up because it was on sale for half off so thank you guys <laughs> yeah you got it awesome. i can't wait to hear about yeah. uh, how it goes for you yeah especially somebody who's got experience yeah. <laughs> thank you well thank you guys so much you got it thanks uh, for calling right. in yeah no problem yeah we need to change how we refer to that i just realized that's pretty confusing to somebody who doesn't know yeah I right because in the in we'll just refer to it as a three-day version i guess uh because uh, we have a specific program that's called Maps Anabolic Advanced, which is totally different programming. It is not yeah, the same programming. It's a different program. No, it was just on the anniversary of Anabolic, and it was just uh, yeah, it's a mistake you and Doug made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was before, that and then was, I followed it up with performance that was, advanced. That was, pre, that was pre-Justin and Adam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we would have caught that top yeah. selling program. Yeah, it was all. It all started before. Uh, yeah, before my you know, somehow nothing's come close. It's really weird. <laughs> then Justin and I arrived and it yeah. blew up. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back. You know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> critically acclaimed. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. All right, you're welcome. Our next caller is Chris from California. What's up, Chris? How can we help you? What up, Chris? What's up, dude? Fitness saviors, what is up? Hey, hey. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put that in my bio. Hey, so uh, as expected, a little starstruck, a little nervous. So can I start off with a little trivia? <laughs> okay, oh, wow. yeah. let's hear hey. it. You need some music? Just, just to kind of break the ice. All right, right? Okay. let's hear it. All right, so first off, Sal, I was trying to find something, but I didn't think I'd be able to stump you. Oh, wow. Mm. Or impress you. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Low hanging fruit. He just, <laughs> he's like seven just plus 12. Sal. <laughs> <laughs> how many amino oh, acids are there? Chris, yeah. this is not going well for you so far. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> well, this is going to be 0 for 2. So I'm going to start this off with Go Kings. Uh, Go Kings. All right, let's go. Let's hear the, let's hear the trivia. What you got for me? Well, I was hoping to come across something where the Kings would be better than the Warriors, but unfortunately I couldn't find it. So, <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, I mean, your oh. record this year, how about that? <laughs> you guys are doing better than us right now, so <laughs> we got you this year, but I was hoping for an for an all-time Kings were going to have the better record, but that ain't the case. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not it. 
All right, what now, you got? Justin. For? Okay, Justin. I'm on Justin, pins and you and I dude. connect, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of look like you look so, yeah. You kind of look like yeah, each other. You're, you're like my yeah. doppelganger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, you can come I, I sit here for me I, sometimes i loved your story a couple episodes ago so i got some timely stuff for you here you ready okay yeah let's get it waterbeds waterbeds right that's the all that's, that's the punchline <laughs> the first waterbed was invented in 1833 by scottish physician neil arnott they were invented to prevent bed sores and were placed in hospitals around the world. Oh, that's an interesting fact. Okay. I like now, that. the modern waterbed, aptly named the Pleasure Pit, the pleasure bed. <laughs> were made mainstream by Charles C. Hall and helped conceive an entire generation. Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was Scottish. Uh, I like it. Nice I like it, Chris. What do you got for us? What can we do for you, buddy? Let me start with all the thank yous and appreciation. You guys are the best. Uh, I truly mean it when I say, um, sorry, a little starstruck again, but uh, you guys are putting us trainers, trainers like myself on the right path when we've been kind of guided down the wrong path for a while now. So I, I appreciate that. Um, on a personal note, when it comes to this, I got this email yesterday and I got so anxious and so excited at the same time. And I almost said no because of that anxiety. But I just want to express that this is just another example and another way that you're helping somebody who got into the fitness industry to help people, but has never really been in front of a camera or done things like this and is not comfortable. So this is just another way to get me out of my comfort zone and to, to grow. Awesome. Hell yeah. So I truly, that, man. truly awesome. appreciate it. He is that. like Justin. Yeah, I, I know. know. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. It's wild. You uh, like cheese too or what? <laughs> I do like cheese. You're right. Okay. So my, my inexperience in this industry kind of led to this question. It's more of a journal entry, but, uh, but it turned out to be an email on a question that you guys get to answer. So I appreciate your help with this. But um, I have a couple clients that I was transitioning out of a MAPS anabolic type program they're athletes, hockey players, recreational sports, uh, golf, things like that. And so I wanted to get them into a program that I loved, which is performance. Now, the problem I was kind of running into is that they're only two day a week clients. So I know when you get a program like performance, how much dedication that is with either five days a week with the mobility sessions and everything else. So my question is kind of two parts on a business side, but then also um, here with programming is as I was trying to draw up these programs uh, a few months ago when I did this, I was trying to figure out how to how to include the mobility, but also the great foundation workouts into one for a two day a week session. Now, is that only because of financial reasons that they're coming to see you like that? Or is that right. because they can only come to the gym that many days? Because that, that would determine how to answer this. Mm hmm. Well, I love, I, I love that you said that because I meant to tell you that, but I forgot. So um, with this, with with the majority of them, it's a time thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the, the couple ways I would approach this, um, <clears throat> and you said that they play um, sports on their own or some recreational activities. There's two approaches that I would have with this. The first approach would be, and, and you have to know your client to know whether or not this would be an option. But I, I did have some clients that I could teach, you know, 10 to 15 minute you know, mobility type drills too mm -hmm. that I could trust that they would do on their own um, before they went out to do their runs or their swims or whatever that they were involved in. And so that would handle a nice chunk of the mobility. Now, there are other clients that I had where I knew that they just wouldn't be consistent with that or I felt like I'd have to monitor them when they would do those the drills because otherwise it wouldn't really reap value. So the way that I would approach either one is the people who I trusted could do the mobility stuff on their own I would do traditional, you know, appropriate strength training on those two days. The ones who I felt, you know, probably needed some guidance, it'd be 50-50. One day would be strength training. Another day would be mobility focused or both workouts would be 50-50 mobility and then strength training. So it really depends on who, you know, your client and what, what you know about them. Yeah, I think uh, in <clears throat> for me, like, um, 
if I'm looking at it as building a ritual, like kind of to sales point of like limiting it down to just a few very impactful mobility drills uh, that I could either use as a primer before the workout um, or like in between on days where they have like, it, even if it's before their sport, like athletes are very ritualistic. And so to, to build that in is like their warm up and, and you get real specific with that in terms of like, if they have any kind of shoulder restriction or hip, um, type of a, a restriction there that we can address, uh, before they get into their, um, you know, fast paced, like sports, explosive movement, um, that would be ideal. And, um, really that's in there just to kind of reinforce better movement patterns, uh, on these mobility days. It does take a while. So it's like, a, I mean, half an hour to 45 minutes of just doing that. So to add that in front of your workouts on the foundation days might be a bit much. So, you know, reducing it down, just the most impactful exercise you could find for that very individual client. I think that would be the way I'd handle it. There's, there's also one more variable that you need to consider too, Chris, that we haven't talked about these clients is how many days a week are they doing this, these recreational sports? Because if they're doing, if they're like, let's say bat, whatever sport it is, let's say it's basketball and they're already playing three to four days a week. Then what I do on the two days that I see them in the gym is different than what if they're playing basketball once or twice a week. So that, that needs to be accounted for too. So if you have somebody who is playing recreational sports, but pretty high volume, which would, in my, would be any more than three days a week, then you know I'm only going to strength train them one day a week. And then the other day is skills or mobility type stuff to complement their sport or the thing they like doing. So that's an important variable that it may be different for each one of these clients that would dictate what I do on those two days also. And you could pull from... Uh, and I don't know. I don't know if you have our Maps Performance Advanced program, uh, but that one has the skills training in it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have someone who's doing a lot of recreational stuff outside, I might one of my days might be just a skills. Honestly, day. I think that's a great like it. It already is just two days structurally, um, and it's advanced. But at the same time, too, if you're if you're coaching somebody through it, you can I regress think it's, it. Yeah, you can regress it. You could adjust things super easy. I think that's an even better program for you to uh, uh, mirror off of. We'll, do you have that? Cool. If you don't have that, we'll send that to you. Do you have it? Yeah, I did get it. Um, I've, oh. I've kind of uh, looked through it a little bit. I haven't looked through it in depth, though. <clears throat> yeah, that, that would serve. By, by the way, do you have our our, co our coaching certification course? So I, I did your free three-day seminar, and then at the time, I just couldn't uh, – financially afford to to get into it okay but. all right there's a monthly option by the way you could pay monthly on it as well but nonetheless how did you like the three-day course did, you, did it help you at all yeah it was it was great i have a lot of information saved from whether it was adam pitching you know on, on how to close clients and pay scale and awesome. um, that interview with the client yeah i loved it awesome oh, good i'm glad you yeah. i'm glad you got value at it it's it's up now um and you can watch it over and over again if you want we have it at mindpumptrainercourse.com. And, uh, you know, we, we train trainers for a long time. So I would love to see you in there, bro, because that's an ongoing program. When you get inside the program, it's not just what we create in there. There's also, like, uh, just yesterday was Steve hosted a live There's ongoing training. Yeah, a live how to get, how to generate leads. You know, for an hour and a half, he was talking to everybody in there on ways for trainers to generate leads. And so, I mean, our goal was when you invest in it, I know it can be it can be pricey, especially for a trainer trying to build their their business. Uh, most people are seeing the return within the first 30 to 60 days on selling either a bigger package, generating more leads. So it kind of pays for itself. So if you can get in there, it'd be great. I'd love to see yeah. you in there. But at the very least, just to save that 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 site uh, and go through the course and practice makes a really big difference uh, for, for most trainers in terms of building their business. Yeah, um, you know, uh, good question when it comes to training active clients and, you know, how you're going to train them. Whatever. I, I mean, look, I'll, uh, to be quite frank and honest, I the vast, vast, vast majority of my clients I trained two days a week. Very rarely did I have a client come more than two days a week. And I'm even talking about clients that were pretty advanced. Yeah. With their, there's a lot you could do. Oh, you get real far with just two days a week. Very yeah. far with just two days a week. I mean, Doug trained with me for two days a week for years and hit some you know crazy lifts and, and I PRs actually train most of my clients three to four days a week, but at, I also at the same time didn't need to when yeah. I think about it. When mm -hmm. I go back and go like, you know, what I know now and how, how I would coach. Well, somebody. you went into training trainers afterwards for a while and so yeah, it was different. Too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh but yeah, no, what I know now is I I would have done it. And I also probably approached this the wrong way with a lot of athletes right like 
uh, the way I decided on how, how hard or how many days I was training was based off of their availability. Not I was never taking into account like, oh, you're playing basketball four days a week. Yeah, the rest of the week. And yeah, adding let me, up yeah. that stress. I looked at the two days. Yeah. You know, that was like what I'd made a mistake as a trainer, as a young trainer training somebody like this. And so that's why that's so important. Like we didn't talk about that variable, but if that person's only playing pickup basketball once a week, the programming looks completely different than the guy who's playing basketball three to four days a week on what you're doing with them on those two totally. days. Totally. And the, the beauty of strength training is you don't need much at all uh, to reap the benefits. And in many cases, people who are very active doing recreational sports or even just you know playing on a team. Very little strength training is needed, and more than that is often too much. Our next question is from Amber from Nevada. Hi, Amber. How you doing, Amber? How can we help hey, you? Hey, guys. What's happening? Uh, great. I'm so obsessed with y'all. I started uh, listening to you guys in uh, May of 2021, and that's because uh, during the pandemic, uh, my show in Las Vegas closed, as well as I was teaching at SoulCycle, also closed. So I launched a gym out of my garage and started training clients and I had all this knowledge because from like 20 years ago when I entered a bodybuilding contest in college. And so I had some knowledge and then as a dancer and then a soul cycle instructor, but I just was so kind of out of date with programming and what is current these days. And so, uh, thankfully I stumbled upon you guys. So thank you. Nice. Awesome. Um, so you're in the coaching program too. Are you in the, the mind pump coaching? I am in the coaching program. How's, I sure am. How's that going so awesome. far? You know, if I'm being honest, I haven't really uh, tabbed, like tapped into that yet. Um, I've just been, I, so I still dance. I'm 43 years old. I still dance in a Vegas show. It's called Purple Rain. It's a Prince tribute show at Planet Hollywood. And then I also direct and choreograph for a minor league uh, basketball team called the San Diego Sharks. And so I'm doing that. And then I was teaching at Soul Cycle 10 classes a week, but we just closed in January. Wow. So mm. a little bit more breathing room. And then I just do extra <laughs> Vegas. So I haven't, uh, plus I'm training clients. So I haven't really had a moment to like, yeah, you, really sound, you sound lazy, okay. Amber. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I will have some time because uh, kind of around my question is, um, I do have breast implants and I have clients with breast implants. And I wanted to know if there is certain training that uh, would be more beneficial or that I should focus on and make sure that is in every programming, a certain exercise, uh, reps and sets, or if there's also exercises that I should avoid. Um, and then secondly, I am getting my breast implants out because I'm dealing with capsular contracture for the third time. And uh, I'll be getting those out in two weeks. So how to go about navigating, uh, getting slowly back into the training, especially because I'm down for six weeks of healing because my pectoralis muscle is being reattached. So when you do submuscular uh, implantation, they cut some of the pectoralis muscle. So my doctor's reattaching. So I have to be down for six weeks. So what are some great uh, exercises or ways to ease back in post explant surgery? Yeah, great, mm -hmm. great question. Okay, so and two questions really in there. Yeah, so the difference between recovery and, and training somebody who's had them for a while are totally different. Yeah, ma yes. a, major a majority of, of people who get implants do it under the muscle, and mm -hmm. so you want to be careful with heavy strength training in the pec area because it can cause the uh, implant to shift and it can cause the, the, the capsule that contains the implant to move. And so you can start to get some movement underneath. And so typically the advice is when they're fully healed and everything works, you know, everything's good is to go light with, uh, with chest exercises and not overemphasize on heavy presses, but you can do overhead presses and you can work on shoulder mobility and strengthening the upper back. Now for you, when you are cleared to exercise, the important thing is to avoid a uh, frozen shoulder, which can sometimes happen with a procedure like that. So what you want to really work on is shoulder mobility and scapular mobility to prevent any kind of frozen shoulder or shoulder mobility issues that can sometimes happen uh, post-surgery. And then just a little side note, there are also, and you, you may be aware of this, and maybe your, your, your surgeon knows this already, but there are peptides that you can use post-surgery that accelerate healing and also help prevent scar tissue uh, from developing. Um, and you're seeing now some, some doctors use these peptides post-surgery with scar formation or just any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of 
um, healing post-surgery. I believe thymosin beta is, uh, thymosin beta and BPC-157 are the two that they'll use. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but you could, we have doctors that we work with at mphormones.com and you could ask them and say, Hey, look, post-surgery, I'd like to avoid, uh, you know, developing scar tissue. I'd like for my, my, my skin, my muscle, everything to heal uniformly. What are the best peptides to use? Um, and they can advise you on that. But, but as far as workouts are concerned, shoulder and scapular mobility is what you want to work on because you'll be limited for a bit in this kind of forward shoulder position. And sometimes, and I'm sure you've experienced this with with either clients or you said you had previous per procedures yourself. Getting out of that, you start to lose shoulder mobility, and in in bad cases, you get frozen shoulder, and that's a really that's a pain to get out of. Yeah, I'd say the most common thing I saw with all my clients that had breast implants was just the forward head and rounded shoulders, and so just putting a lot of emphasis on the posterior chain. So rear delt flies, anything rhomboids, traps. <clears throat> I'm going to focus a lot on that, and then when I do train chest, it's going to be moderate intensity. So I'm gonna do okay. I'm gonna do a lot of incline incline presses. If I'm doing flies and exercise like that, I'm just gonna really moderate. I'm not pushing heavy weight. I'm not yeah. trying to hit PRs with my clients that have that. And I'm focusing more on the shoulder mobility and training the upper back. Like those exercises uh, are where I'm gonna focus most of my time. Yeah. Now some some good news around this, Amber, is that if you were to avoid any upper body heavy strength training. Um, that would be where I would choose because if you were to avoid really strength training the back, you could cause some problems. If you were really avoiding strength training with overhead exercises, you could cause some problems, but heavy horizontal pressing, you know, bench pressing, heavy flies. Like if you were to avoid those for the rest of your life, yeah, you'd be fine. You'd be perfectly fine. In fact, old, you know, old time strength athletes didn't even do horizontal pressing. They didn't even have benches. Benches and, uh, didn't and, get used till the forties and fifties. And a lot of that is because we're so anteriorly driven. We do everything in front of us mm -hmm. in that position anyway. So yeah. it's not like the body's not getting any activity in that position. It's getting tons of activity in that position. So it is an area where you could skip yeah, or, or mm -hmm. just train very light. So, and you're not going to lose much of anything at all. Okay, great. Now there is post uh, explantation, there is a fluffing stage nine to 12 months uh, where the breast tissue finally starts to settle down mm -hmm. uh, to kind of, I don't have children and I've always been really lean. And so I'm hoping to avoid a breast lift. And so um, what would be some ways to help maybe uh, organically uh, work a breast lift through strength training so that I don't have to go under the knife. Would there uh, be upper, specific exercises and stuff? Upper Incli chest. Incline, incline presses. Yeah. That's why I made that. Yeah. Incline pressing. That's okay. And that's primarily what I would do. I wouldn't even do, honestly, flat horizontal pressing yeah. or flies. I, I didn't. Yeah. If I trained chest at all for my clients that had breast implants, it was all incline. It was all for that exact reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But the peptides I'd really look into, Amber, because um, I actually know people now that are using peptides with augmentation to prevent even capsular, uh, you know, contraction with people because it helps um, prevent scar tissue buildup. Really interesting stuff. I'd look into it if I were you. If she goes, kind of see. if she goes to MP Hormones, can she get a consultation? Just ask that. Will That's a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And and I would say, hey, I'm going to get this procedure. What are the best peptides? Uh, to help with uh, the healing process because they've got some interesting data on how um, collagen heals uh, using peptides versus not. And um, you're seeing like less instances of scar tissue. You know, some people will develop when they get a cut of keloid. They're using it for that type of stuff as well. So it's really interesting stuff. Right. I am working with a functional medicine practitioner uh, pre and post. And then I'm even with this last set of implants, I have Stratus, which is a uh, you can use a pig tissue or a cadaver tissue yeah. around the implant to prevent the capsular contracture. But after eight years, it's happened again. So yeah. I'm just getting the, unfortunately. Yeah. It's interesting because, uh, you know, um, people who tend to get that are more likely to get it again for some reason. And yes. I know, and I know, um, I actually trained a surgeon, uh, one of the top surgeons in the, in Silicon Valley. And she would, uh, she was, she had a really, really interesting way of trying to prevent that. Cause she thought it had to do with bacteria, um, that would enter into, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the area and she had a better success rate, but even she told me if people have had it before, they're more, they're much more likely to get it again. And they're not hundred percent sure on why that tends to happen. So, but the, but the peptides are very interesting. Like I said, I don't, some functional <laughs> medicine practitioners work with them, but like I said, the doctors that we have 
that we work with, this is what they do. They work with peptides and, okay. um, yeah. And, and, and you, you could, I mean, anybody can use peptides. So. Okay, great. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much guys. No problem. Right, and Amber, we hope to see you in that forum with the trainers. Yeah, I will. I'll let, you know what? I have six weeks of recovery, so I will definitely tap into that then. Awesome. I'll have it. all the time. Thank all you. Right, yeah. Oh, thanks again. Thank Bye. You. What a cool chair. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, she was sitting in. Like, what room is that? <laughs> I was like, I must, yeah. I must, did you see if she has her own podcast or does something? I imagine she probably creates, If she has a mic. Yeah, she has a mic and has a setup like that. She probably creates yeah. content. Yeah, I mean, speaking of these peptides for this kind of stuff. I didn't know there was something like that. Oh, yeah. What dude. is, do you, you know what it is? I think it's, uh, gosh, I think it's thymus and beta. I'm really upset because I don't oh, know really? for sure. But use, like, some people develop more, some people are more like prone to scar tissue than others. surgery yeah. yeah, dude. And these peptides, like, if you look at scar tissue and how the collagen comes together and heals, there's a different layering process versus when there is no scar tissue. And I believe it's thymus and beta. Again, don't quote me on this, but it, it encourages uh, more of a natural healing process or a healing process, I should say, that doesn't produce scar tissue. And so my prediction is you're going to see these kind of forward, uh, you know, leaning, these, 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 these uh, clinics that are really on the cutting edge, they're going to start using peptides with their, with their procedures because the outcomes are going to be, you know, much better. Look, if you love the show, we have a lose body fat guide. It's free. It costs nothing. Go to mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Adam. 